Hello InfoPerson, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss asteroid impacts and specifically a relatively new study, the study by Bridget Wade and Natalie Cheng that investigates the effects from some of the biggest impacts on the planet in the last few hundred million years, but discovers something somewhat unusual and somewhat unexpected. And so let's discuss the study and these impacts in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with something that's technically common knowledge. We obviously know Earth experienced a lot of different impacts, and we know that at least one of them, 66 million years ago, extremely likely played a very important role in the extinction of dinosaurs, and actually a lot of other life that existed on the planet at this time. And so because of these discoveries, most of us formed a kind of a mental image. Asteroids equal extinction, which is why we have so many movies about this. All of these movies feature a similar concept, a very large asteroid that's most likely going to cause some kind of an extinction event, basically wiping out humanity just like dinosaurs. But the question here is, how accurate is this? Do asteroid impacts really cause extinctions, or is this something that's maybe a little bit over-exaggerated? Especially because we know that, for many decades now, there's been a kind of a debate in regards to what really caused the demise of dinosaurs. We obviously know the asteroid played a really big role, but around the same time a lot of other stuff was going on as well, including one of the biggest volcanic eruptions in the location that's currently India. This is known as the Deccan Traps and is basically as large as you see right here. This was a massive volcanic eruption that lasted for many 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 years and very likely happened before that impact, thus already setting out the planet for the potential extinction. And so today many scientists actually think that this was a combination of events all happening at the same time that eventually caused the collapse of the ecosystem, thus leading to the extinction. So basically here, a single asteroid impact would unlikely to cause these effects. But that's the thing, that's just a hypothesis and there is just not enough evidence to support this yet. However, we can maybe start making some conclusions by looking at additional impacts and by trying to investigate what else happened on the planet when extremely large impacts happened on the planet. And naturally, there's a map of all of the large impacts that you can find in one of the links in the description. And previously, the record holder was this right here, the Rutherford impact, with the impact potentially happening 2 billion years ago. In this case, this doesn't help us much because back then, life was very primitive. Technically, there's an even bigger impact right here in Australia that was discovered just a few months ago in 2024. The video in the description talks about this more. But here, the focus is on impacts that happened when life was already really complex. So naturally, the Chicxulub impact in Mexico. But here, we do have a few more. And specifically, this one stands out. Poppy Guy. The impact structure discovered in Russia that's in top 5 verified impact structures on the planet. Basically, this is one of the largest impacts that left the mark big enough to still be visible today. And here it's approximately 100 kilometers or 62 miles across and was created 35 million years ago. Or basically after the Chicxulub event that killed the dinosaurs. And though previously it has been linked to one potential extinction event known as Eocene Oligocene, it very likely happened at least 2 million years before that. And interestingly, one of the main reasons we know this crater exists and why it was actually discovered is really because of this. Diamonds. And specifically shock pressure diamonds that usually instantly transforms graphite by squeezing it so much that it basically becomes an impact diamond. Very similar features exist in South Africa, produced by an impact 2 billion years ago. And because of these diamonds and their discovery, for many many years this area was completely inaccessible due to Soviet regulations. Basically so that people wouldn't steal the diamonds. And as a result, most of the scientific studies on this crater were only conducted in the last few decades. And that's when the researchers discovered when it was formed, what type of rock very likely formed it, and obviously if it had any effect on the planet. And it looks like in this case this was formed by something that was up to about 8 kilometers across or about 5 miles across, striking a planet at a certain angle. And because this was basically just a little bit smaller than the Chicxulub crater impact, with the rock being just a little bit smaller as well, the natural first question to ask is, ok so what exactly did this do to the planet? Now for many years there was no answer, but then by accident researchers discovered something else that was actually in a different location on the planet. Turns out that within the same time frame, or approximately 25,000 years later, which is basically nothing in geological scales, there was another somewhat similar impact in North America in what's known as the Chesapeake Bay. 
In this case, created in a very similar manner, when a slightly smaller rock, maybe 3 to 5 kilometers or 2 to 3 miles across, hit the Atlantic Ocean, punching a really deep hole through the sediment and very likely reaching granite and what's known as basement rock. Here's roughly what the cross section of this looks like if you were to somehow see inside. And that's of course the effects that were discovered in the last few decades once researchers realized that there was a huge impact here that basically left a crater up to about 85 kilometers or 53 miles across. Although eventually it became at least half as big. Now we actually discussed some of the effects from this in some of the previous videos that you should be able to find in the description below, but in essence there was a huge mega tsunami. A tsunami that even reached several hundred kilometers inland, going all the way to the Blue Ridge Mountains and covering an entire area with a mixture of sediments and ocean water. And in this case this impact was also very similar to the Chicxulub in the sense that it produced a lot of sedimental evaporation and very likely filled the entire atmosphere with huge amounts of carbon dioxide and a lot of other dust particles that potentially covered the entire planet in darkness for at least some time. And so in essence we had these two bizarre impacts happening just a few thousand years apart and producing some of the biggest craters on the planet. I believe they're like number 5 and number 6 in terms of size. But even here the story doesn't actually end. There are some additional studies that suggest that around the same time we actually had several more impacts in the region east of New Jersey, referred to as the Tom's Canyon, where at least one and possibly several asteroids hit the Atlantic continental shelf, basically creating even more tsunamis and more destruction. And this was also around the same time. And so here we had evidence for several major impacts 25,000 years apart and all leaving huge marks and obviously a lot of destruction. Possibly even more destruction than the Chicxulub event if you were to basically add up all of them together. Now we obviously have no idea what exactly happened around this time, but right now the only explanation we have is that there must have been some kind of a disturbance in the solar system, most likely in the asteroid belt, that destabilized several asteroids and plunged them toward planet Earth. But that's not really the question right now. The question is, what effect did this have on the planet? Did this affect the climate? Did this result in the extinction of any species? And if so, why is it that we don't actually talk about this as much? And while well, you can probably guess what the answer is going to be, just based on the title of the study. It basically looks like there was maybe no effect whatsoever. At least no effect in terms of climate change and also potentially no impact to any species on the planet causing any major extinctions. And that's of course kind of unexpected and goes against that common sense knowledge. But how exactly do we know this is true and what exactly did the scientists do to discover this? Well first of all, the actual evidence suggests that there was no climate shift and no lasting effects on any life for at least 150,000 years following the impacts. And in this case only these two impacts that we know happened around the same time. And the evidence that these impacts happened and did actually happen around the same time comes from the discovery and the study of these microspherules or basically silica droplets that usually form when silica containing rocks become instantly vaporized by impacts, eventually ended up in the atmosphere and then solidifying into droplets falling into sediment on the ground. These have been basically used as a sign that impacts did happen around the same time and that they were very powerful. But in order to study climatic changes, researchers relied on something a little bit different. Here they analyzed isotopes of oxygen and carbon. The isotopes that were discovered inside fossils from unusual organisms known as foraminifera. These are basically plankton that usually end up as sediment in the oceans and have been always used to study climate on the planet because they do absorb things very well. And so by using approximately 1500 fossils, here the researchers created a kind of a map showing us what happened on Earth approximately 35 and a half to approximately 35.9 million years ago. But in this case, to make this even more detailed, they actually used fossils from organisms living at different depths. So not just focusing on, for example, deep ocean organisms or the ones living near the surface, but by combining all of them together. And here the results are kind of surprising. With the most obvious surprise being that there really doesn't seem to be any effect. You can actually see a very specific layer of iridium that happened as a result of impacts and even a layer of North American tectites, which are usually formed by asteroid impacts as well, but the levels of oxygen and carbon remain exactly the same implying that climatic conditions in the oceans remain exactly the same. In contrast, they actually do find a slight change approximately 100,000 years before the impacts, 
suggesting a warming of about 2 degrees Celsius that was caused by something entirely different. But also suggesting that these climatic shifts were definitely visible in these sediments, just not as a result of impacts. And that's entirely different from what was expected or from what we always believed. Some of the theoretical predictions of impacts like the Chicxulub impact obviously suggested dramatic shifts very likely lasting for at least a thousand years. But in this case, when looking at thousands of years, nothing really changed. Although here there's a really important side note. When it comes to samples in this case, we don't really see short-term changes or changes in hundreds or even thousands of years. Mostly because these samples seem to only appear every 11,000 years, making this a more long-term effect as opposed to short-term effect. But in the long term, there was definitely no climatic shift and no dramatic changes that would affect the planet in any way. Now, obviously, they would still produce massive earthquakes, tsunamis, and very likely huge fires, as well as maybe cover the planet in dust for at least a few years. But even based on other studies involving temperature changes or the sudden disappearance of species on the planet, right around the time of these impacts, nothing major seems to have changed which is essentially the main conclusion from the study. But ironically, we know that approximately a million and a half years later, something on the planet happened after all, shifting the climate so much that it basically cooled down dramatically, which eventually led to the Antarctic glaciation and the extinction event approximately 34 million years ago. The actual causes for this, though, are currently unknown. But it looks like these two impacts possibly only had very short-term effects and did not affect the planet in any major way. Which of course once again raises the question about the Chicxulub impact and its effects on the extinction of dinosaurs. So was it just that final drop that we needed that was actually started by those volcanoes in India? Or is there something we're not considering in terms of differences between what happened 66 million years ago compared to what happened 35 million years ago? Either way, we don't really have any answers yet, but we'll come back and talk more about this once there are some additional discoveries or once we learn something else about other impacts on the planet. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.